Hello friends, today we are going to learn an important topic from algebra and this topic is progressions. Now progressions word is made from the word progress which means slowly and slowly increasing the value or it may be decreasing the value to get some new value. Now before moving further, let us take an overview of the topic progressions. Now students, in this topic, we are going to cover the different types of progressions. Now these different types of progressions are arithmetic progression and geometric progression. So friends, we are going to look how to identify or recognize whether a progression is arithmetic progression or it is a geometric progression. Then further, we are going to look at different ways or the formulas to calculate the nth term as well as the sum of n terms or the infinite terms for an arithmetic progression or geometric progression. And then afterwards, we have some basic questions for you to practice at the convenience of your home. So let us start with the first part, arithmetic progression. Now friends, how to identify whether a progression is arithmetic progression or not. So for that, let us take an example of arithmetic progression. So I am taking an example in which I am writing the terms of an arithmetic progression. These terms are 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17 and so on. So can we look that the difference between the consecutive terms in each case is 3. Now this difference which is constant for the consecutive terms is called common difference. Now this common difference is represented by a symbol small d which in this case becomes 3. Now students this is very very important that we always have to find out the difference of the term with the preceding term. So I can say the difference will be 8 minus 5 or this can also be written as 11 minus 8 and so on. Further we are representing the first term with a. So if 2 is the first term a then can we observe the second term 5 can be made by adding the common difference with the first term a. So 5 can be written as 2 plus 3. Similarly can we look 8 can be written as 5 plus 3 or which can be further become 2 plus a plus 2d. Now friends can we say the third term will be similarly a plus 3d and so on. This will help us to write the nth term of an arithmetic progression. So now can we observe a basic pattern that whenever we are writing a term for an arithmetic progression, this always includes some coefficient of the common difference. So can we observe when we are writing the second term, the coefficient of d is 1. When we are writing the third term, the coefficient is 2 and so on. So friends, we can write the nth term of an arithmetic progression as the first term plus n minus 1 into the common difference d. I hope this formula is clear. Okay. Now, from here, we can check that nth term of an arithmetic progression can be written as a plus n minus 1 into d, where Tn becomes the nth term, A is called the first term and D is the common difference between the consecutive terms. Now friends, this is very very important to learn over here that in case we want to find out the last term of an arithmetic progression, we can again use the same formula as we are going to calculate the nth term. So which means the formula to calculate the last term or the nth term is the same. Now let's take an example to clear this formula. So in this question we have to calculate the 25th term for a given arithmetic progression. 
Now friends, can we observe that the first term in this case is 12 while the common difference can be calculated as any term minus the preceding term. So which comes out to be 6 in this case. Now let us write the formula to calculate the nth term. This is a plus n minus 1 into d. Now putting in the values for the various variables, we can write the 25th term is 12 plus 25 minus 1 into the common difference 6, which upon solving can be simplified as, so this becomes 24 into 6, 144 and the 25th term comes out to be 156. I hope this question makes clear the use of the nth term formula. Now friends, let us move on to the next formula to calculate the sum of n terms of an arithmetic progression. Now friends, let us learn a new formula for calculation of the sum of n terms of an arithmetic progression. This formula is sum of n terms can be written as the number of terms divided by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into the common difference d. Now let us try to apply this formula for the calculation of sum of n terms of an arithmetic progression. So students, we have to calculate the sum of 30 terms for this given arithmetic progression. Now as calculated earlier, we can write the first term is 12 while the common difference for the progression can be calculated as 6. So now let us write the formula for sum of n terms as n by 2 multiplied by 2a plus n minus 1 into d. Now putting in the values of various variables. So sum of 30 terms can be written as 30 divided by 2 multiplied by 2 into 12 plus number of terms 30 minus 1 can be written as 29 and the common difference 6. Further solving it, we can write 15 into 24 plus 29 into 6 is 174 which on simplification gives 15 into 198 and on further simplification gives us the sum of 30 terms of the progression as 2970. Now friends, let us learn another formula for the sum of n terms of an arithmetic progression. This formula can only be applied if we know or we can calculate the last term of an arithmetic progression. This formula says sum of n terms is number of terms divided by 2 and further multiplied by the sum of the first term and the last term. Now let us take an example to understand this formula. So in this question, we need to find out the sum of all the multiples of 7 which are lying between 43 and 349. So 49 will be the first multiple of 7 greater than 43. Similarly, 56, 63 and 70 are another further multiples of 7. Now to find the last multiple of 7 in this progression, can we observe that 350 will be a multiple of 7 because 35 is a multiple of 7. Now to get a number which is a multiple of 7 as well as less than 349, we subtract 7 from 350. This will give us 343 which will be surely a multiple of 7. Now let us find out first of all the number of terms for this arithmetic progression. The sum the formula for the nth term of a progression can be written as a plus n minus 1 into d which is also applicable to get the last term. But in this case we know the last term is 343 while the first term is 49 
we have to calculate the number of terms. So this is n minus 1 multiplied by the common difference 7. So after solving, we can get the number of terms to be 43. Now, further we need to find out the sum of these 43 terms. So can we write this formula? Sum of 43 terms will be the number of terms divided by 2 into the first term plus the last term. Which upon solving becomes 43 upon 2 into 392 on further simplification which becomes 43 into 196 and further it gives us the sum of 43 terms which are multiples of 7 as 8, 4, 2, 8. I hope students this question is clear to all of you. Now students let us move further to the different type of progressions called as geometric progression. Let us take an example to understand the basic geometric progression. So we can have 2, 6, 18, 54, 162 and so on. So students, can we observe that 2 multiplied by 3 becomes 6. Similarly, 6 multiplied by 3 becomes 18 and 18 multiplied by 3 becomes 54 and so on. Now in this case, this multiplication factor is constant which is called as the common ratio. This common ratio is represented by the symbol small r which in this case comes out to be 3. Now again, similar to arithmetic progressions, we calculate the common ratio as the ratio of the term with the previous term. Now further, if we write the first term to be a, can we write the second term as 2 multiplied by the common ratio 3 or in notation that becomes a into r. Similarly, the third term can be written as 6 multiplied by the common ratio 3. So now this can be written as a r square and similarly the fourth term becomes a r cube, fifth term becomes a r 4 and so on. Now again students can we observe the second term has r power 1 while for the third term there is power 2 for r. Similarly for third term and fourth term we have the power 1 less than the number of term. So now we can write the nth term of a geometric progression as a multiplied by r raised to the power n minus 1. Now let us take this formula once again with the help of this information. So we can write for a geometric progression the nth term can be calculated as a into r raised to power n minus 1 where tn represents the nth term, a represents the first term and r represents the common ratio for our geometric progression. Now let us take an example to learn this formula. For this question we need to find out the 8th term of the given geometric progression. So now can we write the first term in this case is 5 while the common ratio can be calculated as the second term divided by the first term which comes out to be 2 in this case. Now the formula for the nth term is a r raised to power n minus 1 so which upon putting the values becomes 8th term is 5 multiplied by the common ratio 2 raised to the power 8 minus 1 or which upon further simplification becomes 5 into 2 raised to power 7 or this becomes 5 into 128 which comes out to be 640. So friends, the 8th term in this geometric progression comes out to be 640. Let us move on to a further formula for calculation of the n terms of a geometric progression. Now we have 
two formulas in this case to calculate the sum of geometric progression depending upon whether the common ratio is greater than 1 or it is less than 1. So the sum of n terms of a geometric progression if common ratio is greater than 1 it becomes a multiplied by r raised to power n minus 1 upon r minus 1 whereas for the common ratio to be less than 1 the formula converts to a into 1 minus r raised to power n upon 1 minus r. Again let us take an example to learn these formulae as well. So we have to calculate the sum of 10 terms for this given geometric progression. Now again can we see that the first term is 5 while the common ratio can be calculated as 2. Now can we observe this common ratio is greater than 1. So now writing the formula for sum of n terms as a by 2 a into r raised to power n minus 1 upon r minus 1. Now putting in the values of the various variables, sum of 10 terms can be written as the first term multiplied by 2 raised to power the number of terms 10 minus 1 upon 2 minus 1 which upon further solving becomes 5 into 1023 divided by 1 which gives us the value of sum of 10 terms as 6115. Now friends, we also have the formula for the calculation of sum of infinite terms of a geometric progression. Now this formula is applicable only when the common ratio is less than 1. This formula is A upon 1 minus R the common ratio. Again let us take an example. To learn this formula, we have to find the sum of infinite terms of the series 60, 30, 15, 7.5 and so on. So in this case, the first term is 60 while the common ratio can be calculated as the second term divided by the first term which comes out to be 1 by 2. So can we observe friends that this common ratio is less than 1 which means we can apply the formula for the sum of infinite terms which was sum of infinite terms is a upon 1 minus r the common ratio. So by putting in the values we can write the sum of infinite terms will be 60 upon 1 minus 1 by 2 can be further written as 60 upon 1 minus 2 which upon solving gives us the sum of infinite terms as 120. I hope students this makes clear the basic concepts of the various types of progressions arithmetic progression as well as the geometric progression. Now further you have some practice questions to solve at the convenience of your home. And this is the answer key for the practice questions. Thank you for listening to this video.